Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a white, blue and red or Jeskai colored aura deck that combines the new Itali's favor from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan with a light pause Emperor's Voice which has been in standard for quite some time, has even seen play in older formats where it's quite powerful but it has never really seen a lot of play in standard so we're gonna try to address that today. This 2 mana 2-2 two -two says whenever an aura enters a battlefield under our control, if we cast it we can search our library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal to that aura with a different name than each aura we control and put it onto the battlefield attached to light pause. So that's a lot of words but in essence we just get to find more auras whenever we cast an aura and we get to increase a light pause power and toughness and give it various abilities. And the light pause synergizes incredibly well with the new Itali's favor, a three mana aura. When it enters a battlefield we get to discover three giving the enchanted creature plus one plus one and trample. So let's say we have a light pause in play, turn three we play Itali's favor. We now get to discover three in addition to triggering Light Pause's ability so we can immediately go get another three mana aura if we'd like and go get our one copy of Draconic Destiny for instance giving the enchanted creature plus one plus one flying haste and fire breathing so we can pay one mana to increase its power by one until end of turn and when the enchanted creature dies we can return destiny to its owner's hand so that's another nice upside but we're not done yet there's still discover three on the stack which could potentially help us find a another aura and there's plenty of those in the deck could potentially find a copy of combat research which can enchant or light pause giving it plus one plus one and ward one because it's legendary and then when it deals combat damage to the opponents we get to draw a card as well and then because we're casting another aura and putting it on our creature we get to trigger a light pause once again finding another one mana aura in this case and there's plenty of those to choose from so we can find whichever one suits our needs in a particular situation maybe get a sticky fingers giving menace and then making treasure tokens if we connect making it easier to empty the rest of our hand so all of a sudden we essentially put four auras on the battlefield with a single Itali's favor and then on the following turn we can start activating draconic destiny or casting more auras so that's kind of our main game plan then besides a light pause we can also try and enchant or illuminator virtuoso a 1-1 one -one with double strike saying whenever it becomes the target of a spell we control it connives so we can also connive when we enchant or virtuoso with our various auras and then discarding additional spells we don't need will result in extra counters which of course pairs very nicely with a double strike and then to try and protect these two key creatures we've got four copies of Skrelf which we can deploy on turn one so turn one play Skrelf turn two play our creature and then we're ready to protect it with the activated ability here and then even though Skrelf is legendary we can still easily discard excess copies to connive either from Virtuoso or from our security bypass which lets us connive when we attack with our creature that can also go unblocked if it's the only attacking creature so that's another way to get through a board stall if Trample or Menace are not good enough can also maybe fly with Draconic Destiny. And then another way to protect our creatures is Saiba Cryptomancer, an O1 with flash, backup one, and hexproof. So when it enters, we can target a light pause or virtuoso, give it a plus one counter, and then also hexproof until end of turn. But in a pinch, Cryptomancer could also turn into a threat itself, simply play it, put a plus one counter on itself, and then now we can start enchanting it, especially in matchups where the opponent has a lot of spot removal and a light pause and virtuoso may not be the most reliable threats. We can just start piling auras onto our hexproof creature and that's also a viable strategy and then we can take a quick glance at our remaining auras mostly at one mana there is a military discipline giving plus one plus two and first strike until end of turn can flash it in at instant speed so that can also kind of function as a combat trick especially in combination with the ability from light pause getting another aura and then there's a Radiant Grace giving plus one plus two and a Vigilance, so it can be helpful in a racing situation. And if our enchanted creature were to die, it also transforms and then the opponent will have their creatures enter tapped. Then there's a Rafine's Guidance giving plus one plus one and can also replay it from the graveyard for three mana. Of course, four copies of Combat Research, one of the more exciting auras, especially when paired with a double striking Virtuoso. We now get to draw two cards if it connects. 
We've got one copy of the War Paint, giving plus two, plus one, just a way to increase our stats even more. Hammer Hand can also be a useful tool, as we can give our creature haste when it enters, and then can also prevent an opposing creature from blocking, so it can be very useful to close out the game if the opponent is low enough. And then Immolation can be quite flexible as an early removal spell that can enchant opposing creatures, shrinking their toughness by two, so we can take out one and two toughness creatures, but we can also maybe search it up with a Light Pause just to increase our power by two, if that's all we need. I've also tried a build which had more untapped red mana on turn 1 and played more copies of Immolation just to give us a bit more interaction, and that's another valid approach to this strategy. And then a Sticky Fingers can also be quite useful, can also potentially fix our colors, let's say we only have blue and white mana, we can still maybe get Light Paws going, play a 1 mana enchantment that's blue or white, then get Sticky Fingers, which can start making treasure, and now we can unlock our red mana as well. And then Menace can also be helpful, if the enchanted creature dies we still get to draw a card. And then we've got our four copies of Bypass to make our creature unblockable. And then we've already covered Itali's Favor and Draconic Destiny. So yeah, these are pretty much all of the auras we can be playing in these colors that will enhance our creatures, since a lot of the auras in Standard are actually removal spells, and you're not going to want to search them up with Light Paws to enchant Light Paws. So that's a bit of a nombo, even though they can still help you trigger Light Paws if you cast them in the first place, like with Immolation. But don't try to Immolation your own Light Paws before you increase its toughness, or otherwise it's going to die before you can search up another aura just be warned. I've also tried to build with uh, more instant speed protection spells like Loran's Escape instead of Cryptomancer, which can also be a valid approach, since sometimes Skrelv also can be a bit awkward if you don't play it turn one, can be a little bit slow to help protect your creatures later in the game. So there's a few ways you can sort of mix and match the protection spells and the auras. I've also tried a build with green instead of uh, blue mana, which gives you access to some other interesting auras like Audacity, and there's also the new Danitha, which has a lifelink, which is something that's sorely missed in this build, since there's no easy way to give lifelink to our creatures unless you go through Disturb first, which is usually too slow. And then a mana base, just lots of uh, untapped dual lands, as many as possible. And then uh, red mana, usually not too important to play untapped early on, since we're usually casting our red spells starting turn 2 and turn 3. So I'm not focusing on the turn 1 immolation as much with the current mana base. And then the channel lands also pick up a nice discount from some of our legendary creatures, like Skrelv and Light Paws. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and yeah, I'm gonna keep this. It's gonna be a bit slow against aggro, but we've got double light paws with the mana to cast them. Facing turn one, a ruin lurker bat, so an aggressive creature deck. Could actually use the immolation turn one here on the bat. I think I still wait to see if something scarier shows up. And if we can wait until we play light paws, we can also get immediate value. So black-white, turn to Amalia, makes sense. They can immediately explore. Finds a land. Okay, so I have to decide if we want to Immolation Amalia, pay the three extra life. Or if we deploy Light Paws. Likely gets removed, opponent gets to then grow Amalia. And then, um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see if we can outrace the damage. Could still be feasible. Could also take out the bats now, so they don't get to keep exploring for free. I think it's still probably fine to play Light Paws, flush out some removal, and then next turn go Light Paws plus Immolation, or maybe Light Paws into some other one mana aura. It's gonna be the Pilgrim next. And our opponent doesn't want to trade here. Finds another land into another bat. Alright, so now they get to trigger Amalia. Now there is a spell on top. So our opponent's putting a lot of stuff in play. A lot of it gains life, making it tricky to race. But now we do get to untap with Light Paws. And we want to try and deploy as many spells as possible, pretty much. So we can go with Immolation, probably on the Pilgrim now. Then get research, then we can play another research, and then we can still hammer hand, maybe get a sticky fingers as well for menace. So that dies. This way we can get double research going, which seems strong. And 
and then I have to decide what other aura to get. Leaning Sticky Fingers. Could also go for Vigilance or War Paints just for more damage. The extra mana is going to come in handy with the extra cards we're going to draw. And then the Bat cannot block. We have Menace, so Amalia also cannot block. And then now we could also get Vigilance, I suppose. So we get to draw two, make a treasure. And now we have Ward two, so it's going to be harder for opposing removal to answer Light Paws. If they do, we can still follow up with another one. The Bat's not too bad here. We've got Double Bypass. Flyers can keep attacking. And yeah, the Explorer does add up. Ooh, nice. Atali's Favor. Seems right what we need here. Gonna hang on to Soaring City. And then we can still bypass afterwards as well. But now we can also get Draconic Destiny, so we can fly ourselves. Getting a Virtuoso as another threat can help against the potential Edict effect. Still gonna bypass... Hmm. I guess we could bypass Virtuoso now. And then... Could discard Light Paws to get to counter, could discard Lands just to keep an extra threat just in case. And what do we have left? Opponent is at 19. Let's go with the Guidance. Opponent falls to 10. Get to, again, draw to make a treasure. And pass it back. So next turn we could be threatening lethal if we pump with Draconic Destiny. Voice of the Blessed, still acceptable. Yeah, I could regret not putting the bypass on a light pass, although we can still clear a blocker with Soaring City. So they do get to scry end of turn, since they descended. Good synergy with Amalia. Bone still attacking. Back up to 13, voice grows twice. And they get to explore. Drawing two lanes. So if we pump Light Paws six times here, that should still be game. Guess we can go to attackers. We have Menace, so they cannot block. And for one mana, they can't have any relevant interaction. Sweet. So yeah, nice back and forth here with the black-white life gain deck. But yeah, we got to combo off with Light Paws, and it was just good enough. Awesome. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that's missing white mana, unfortunately. So we'll have to mulligan. This we could try, missing blue for combat research. Might be better off just keeping double light paws in case one gets removed, and then spells we can actually cast with any land we draw. And then light paws plus Itali's favor is what this deck is all about. Opponent on red aggro, so I can certainly expect the first light paws to die. But then we'll be able to follow up with Light Paws into Guidance and increase our toughness right away. 
And there's a lightning strike, so opponent is now tapped out. Guess I could save myself a bit of damage by playing Igancho, but I might end up channeling it, you never know. And then we could get something that increases toughness by one at least. And then this would also give ward one. So I'm kind of liking a research. And then extra Natalie's favor can get our author three mana aura. And then we should be good to go. Don't see Monored taking out Light Paws with three mana when they also have to pay the ward. Since they can't use multiple burn spells, Witch Docker Frenzy would still leave them unable to pay the ward. So best they can do is try and race, maybe have a monstrous rage here on Felden. So can't really afford to block. Opponent was thinking about a monstrous rage. Virtuoso, an interesting draw, but I think we gotta go for Itali's favor. Could also get the Vigilance aura here, so we can keep Light Paws back on defense as well. Although getting the three mana aura is a bit better value. Now we can block a Phoenix Chick as well. And discover into Sticky Fingers. So now we can get our Vigilance Aura as well. Which is the Radiant Grace. And then I could attack. And then after making Treasure still play Virtuoso. Or I could pump with the... Destiny's ability to hit for 8. Doesn't seem like we'll have trouble closing out the game. If I hit for 8 right now, and then next turn I might still be one short of lethal. I guess if we draw an untapped land, pump for 5, that's 12. So I actually prefer just pumping here instead of playing Virtuoso. And then of course I guess we can use the treasure token to pump Light Paws next turn. So we should have guaranteed lethal. And could also go for another research. Get another aura, get more ward. And go for maybe a war paint. Alright, so at eight toughness we can pretty safely block a creature with monstrous rage, but at 14 life we should be also safe to take it. And yeah, not much her opponent can do about this. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Can't really go all in on Skrelv here, so take a mulligan. This is going all in on Light Paws. But uh, yeah, if it works out, it's definitely a bit more impactful. So, tapped Coast, turn to maybe Light Paws. Between Discipline and Guidance. Kind of like the instant speed on discipline since we might be able to get the uh, ward enchantments to fizzle an opposing removal spell if we're patient. For now, tapped sundown pass so we don't take one damage if we run out turn two light paws. Opponent to red green could be dinosaurs, which don't have a lot of removal, but we'll see here. Yeah, turn two yearling. And now with a backup light pause, this seems like an easy decision. Dinosaurs can still go very big, especially if they have a turn 3 hammer skull here. Looks like a tapped land, but they also had the chomp. Okay, good thing we have a backup creature here. So we can go with light pause. And then... Could keep up discipline at instant speed. Kind of like that idea. We were going to have to take one damage regardless. There's a Hammer Skull, so they get to pump the Yearling. But we can give first strike at instant speed, so that's actually going to work out pretty nicely. And then what aura do we want to get? 
Could be combat research. Pair it with bypass next turn. Yeah, that seems fine. And then sticky fingers and bypass. See what else we can get. Probably want to increase our damage output with a war paint. Could also go for vigilance, although we no longer have first strike, so still probably won't be able to block a 6 6 profitably. And then could get the guidance. Still going to be losing a light pass to a potential chomp. Maybe a reason to get a Radiant Grace or Guidance to get it back from the graveyard. Sure. Attack. We do get to draw, connive and make a treasure. And any reason to bypass now. Still won't be able to get a buff 6 toughness, so I think we pass the turn. Fight rigging, alright. So we'll see what our opponent can cheat into play now. Could be a Gishoth. They didn't instantly decide, so hopefully that's good news. Oof, Trumpeting Carnosaur, still very good. So we take 7. And there's an Atali's Favor, okay. So now we can get our Flying Enchantment. And then sing some mana into it. And yeah, hopefully that's good enough. So we want to first enable Light Paws. And get our Draconic Destiny. Discover finding another Bypass. And then get Immolation, which pumps by 2. And then play a land and can pump three more times with the Draconic Destiny. Yeah, this ended up being super close. I guess we don't need the last one. If we didn't have lethal, we also could have gotten our Vigilance enchantment and then uh, try to survive for another turn, but easier to not have to deal with that mess. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is not that great. Got Skralv, but no two mana creature to protect. Missing blue mana. This is better. So I'm tempted to keep Atali's favor, hoping to find red mana to combo with Light Paws or any of our two mana creatures, really. But I probably still need to get rid of one of our creatures. And um, yeah, it's tough. Cryptomancer could be a safe haven for all our auras. Virtuoso hits a bit harder, especially with the research. And then we would have Cryptomancer to maybe protect it. But uh, I think I'm gonna go with... Try and protect Light Paws with Cryptomancer. But I have Cryptomancer as kind of a backup creature if we're facing a removal heavy deck. Okay. So against the domain deck, they may not be able to cast a cheap removal spell here. And then next turn we could research with Cryptomancer backup. It's gonna be a briefcase, that's fine. And Skrelv the draw. So, definitely gonna research. We could get Sticky Fingers, allowing me to play Skrelv and keep up Cryptomancer. And then if we do need to use a treasure, we can still... Uh, use a treasure for next turn for Itali's favor. And Menace, of course, allows us to attack past a token, so we get to draw a card. Now, the domain deck will have some sweepers like Sunfall, so hopefully we can do some damage before that happens. If they were to Leyline Binding here, they still need to pay the ward. And then we can play Cryptomancer. Second Mirax into Stomper. Okay. So, should not see any removal here. Opponent will have four basic land types at most, so Leyline Binding still costs two mana. 
and Stomper can't block yet. So we're in the clear to go for Natalie's favor. And then we'll still have a treasure afterwards that we can put to use. And hopefully we'll discover another aura here. But with a light possibility, we're gonna get Draconic Destiny. And a Hammer Hand. Okay. Get something that can increase our damage output, either War Paint. Could also get Guidance as something we can maybe use to recover from a Sweeper effect, which might happen next turn. And then I could also attack with Skrelv since we have Cryptomancer if they go for Binding instead of Sunfall. Just to get one more damage in. And I could have also pumped with a Draconic Destiny here, but I'll leave myself with a bit more mana. We have Lethal next turn if there's no Sweeper pretty much. is going to attack for one and cast Sunfall. All right, that's too bad. So we can recover with Cryptomancer. And then put a Bypass on it and hope they don't have another Sunfall. Yep, that's a pretty tough card for us to beat. But that's why we got the Guidance, so we can bypass. And then Guidance right now, I think. No need for Skrelv. So I'll ditch Skrelv just to get an extra plus one counter. Could discard land in case we need more mana. Now they could still Leyline Binding one of my auras instead of targeting my creature, of course. So I could see the need for another bypass, just to make sure we don't run into an incubator token. It's gonna be another briefcase. And yeah, let's go for another bypass here. Get an extra connive as well. And then if we draw into a non-land card, we can get an extra plus one counter. Don't need Skrelv. And land can go. Alright, let's see what happens. Bones at four. They can animate the Incubator, but they need another Sweeper pretty much, or some life gain. Maybe an Archangel of Wrath can help win the race. If it weren't for Sunfall exiling our creature, we could have gotten back the Destiny to hand, but it only works if our creature actually dies, and exiling is not dying. So if our opponent taps out to cast Atraxa, they're likely still dead. So it's pretty much another Sunfall or some life gain here that they need. Double ley line binding on the bypass could also do it. Alright, take five. So less likely to be double ley line binding, more likely to be another sunfall. Archangel of Wrath, fair enough. Their opponent can gain four here. So now we're hoping to find an Atali's favor to increase her damage output. Just a land. So it's not looking good. Can attack for four. Opponent has us for eight on the way back, at least. So we're dead to another Archangel. And I think I need to discard Bypass to get an extra plus one counter. Although we still need to draw something else useful. All right, there's a Tally's Favor. I guess we could cast that now, in case that uh, gives us something useful. And then next turn we might be able to beat our opponent gaining three. 
I found a virtuoso, so that can maybe block. So we have a chance, but uh, it's not a great one. This might be end of turn Leyline Binding, and if they have a second Archangel, we're dead. Or they might keep the Binding to answer an Aura to shrink down the Cryptomancer. So don't think I'm jumping with Virtuoso. If her opponent has second Archangel, I don't think we can win either way. And they would probably just cast it main phase to kill Virtuoso. But I'm going for Atraxa, not leaving white mana untapped. But they did find Leyline Binding. I guess Hurt Migration could also gain him 3. And Virtue of Persistence can take out Virtuoso while gaining life as well. Yeah, so it's not looking good. We'll need another Itali's Favor off the top into something good. Opponent does have the untapped lane, so they can pick which one they prefer here. Virtue of Persistence might make a little bit more sense taking out Virtuoso, but they can gain more life with Herd Migration. So we'll take 8, fall to 2. Putin now leaving the token back. If they leave the token back, then going for Herd Migration might make more sense. Although, you never know, we could have a fourth Bypass. I guess Bypass wants us to attack with only one creature. So another bypass on Virtuoso wouldn't actually make a huge difference. But if we had another hammer hand, let's say, preventing a creature from blocking, then it could be beneficial to keep two blockers back. So your opponent only attacking with Archangel, playing it super safe. And then I imagine they'll be trying to gain three. So your opponent's at a virtual ten life, and I don't think we're getting four more power on the Cryptomancer. Light pause is a bit late to the party. Alright, GG's. We gave it our best, but Sunfall was just a bit too much for us to overcome. Bones at 1. We get to connive. Still a bit risky on their part not to gain the life right away if we had a burn spell here. Although unlikely out of an aura deck, admittedly. Another light pause. But we're certainly dead on the way back here. Alright, GG's. Opponent's gonna discard Herd Migration, and an attack from Atraxa will be good enough. Yeah, this is probably how the matchup plays out some amount of the time, if a sweeper's involved. Without a sweeper, I think we have the tools to potentially beat some of the powerful 7-drops like Atraxa, if we already have an established threat on the board. Double Virtue, and attack will do it. GG, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and no creatures means mulligan. This is better. Got Skrelv into Light Paws. Kinda wanna keep double research. So, get rid of a plane so we can play both researches with the lands we currently have. And yeah, we've got a protected light pause that we can start suiting up. So our opponent will need some pretty specific answers. But they are certainly out there if they're on a control deck. Various sweeper effects. So there was an argument for playing Virtuoso there on turn 2 with the research to draw multiple cards. And now with the lands, I could go Virtuoso, research on the Virtuoso, still trigger Light Paws. Or we can just double research the Light Paws, which will also get the plus one plus one being a legendary. We get to draw more cards, and then have Virtuoso as maybe a follow-up to a sweeper effect. So we can get War Pains, increase power by two, and then maybe a Sticky Fingers. So that we can start generating a bit more mana. As opposed to Immolation to increase power by 2 once again. Kinda like the Sticky Fingers. 
Menace could also help in case your opponent's got some blocker that they can flash in. So we get to draw two cards, make a treasure, and then, yeah, we could still play Virtuoso afterwards. Which seems worth it. If they take out Virtuoso... I think we're safe to use Skrelv. Because with now Ward 2, essentially, I can't think of any one-mana removal spell that would deal with the Light Paws. And then next turn we can hammer hand on the Virtuoso, perhaps. Don't think our opponent's gonna find too many useful cards in our deck. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Turn two light paws. Protected by Skralf is pretty good against control. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a light paws, a backup creature, and a cryptomancer, so sign me up. Just missing a red mana. Although Radiant Grey is getting sticky fingers, could still make a treasure to cast a war paint. Let's see what our opponent's up to here. Blue White. Anchorage makes me think control. Let's just play the light pause before it can get countered. And then next turn we could Radiant Grace, get Sticky Fingers, keep up Cryptomancer perhaps. Could also see a get lost before we untap. Alright, we get to untap, find Atali's favor. So I think we go for our plan here. Radiant Grace, keep up Cryptomancer. And then get Sticky Fingers to unlock our red spells. That resolves. Getting combat research, also reasonable. To start drawing and naturally finding red mana. This also plays around a 2-2 token from Virtue of Loyalty. And there it is. We do have Menace, so that's not a concern. Could potentially block the knight after pumping light paws, although it could be risky into open mana. Could now also play the war paints or just wait until next turn for Itali's favor. So a couple ways we can go about this. War paint would probably get our ward enchantment, make it a bit more awkward for the opponent to use spot removal. Although then I won't be able to necessarily Itali's favor next turn, which we might need to attack past multiple blockers. So let's just pass. And then if we draw land, it's going to be easier to play Favor and keep up Cryptomancer at the same time. If our opponent attacks, probably safer to take it for now. Can still attack back as it stands. And we found the land, so that makes it easier to play Favor. Still possible they're playing counter spells, but nope, that resolves. And then now we could get Draconic Destiny. So we don't have to worry about ground creatures. And our opponent's gonna attempt to destroy evil now that our creature is large enough. Okay, Cryptomancer in response, and hope they don't have another spot removal spell when they untap. Found a Virtuoso. So I could still play the War Paint. I guess it's worth it to cast it now on the Virtuoso. So we diversify a little bit and then still get an aura on the Light Paws. I'll keep the Bypass, discard another Virtuoso. And then if they destroy Light Paws, could be good to get Discipline. Could be good to get a Guidance that we can still replay, or we can simply make them pay the ward. And this is better if it survives. And then either way we're left with a 4-3 double striking Virtuoso that we can make unblockable. So yeah, opponent's got a few problems they need to deal with. But they could still easily get out of this. Siren... Not the best blocker. 
The line pawns has trample and menace. Bone's gonna explore, try and find an answer. So now that they only have two mana with a ward, they're unlikely to have instant speed removal. And yeah, Schooner into a concession suite onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a promising hand, double light paws. So if the first one gets removed, we could still play one on three and suit it up. And then Destiny on light paws, we can uh, go get our Itali's favor. Opponent on maybe a red white tokens deck. So they shouldn't have much removal, but they tend to go pretty fast. So we may not be able to keep up with them going wide, even if I build up one large threat. So that's the concern. And looks like our opponents can make some goblins with a gleeful demolition. And a frontliner. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. They could still have a knight errant in hand since they didn't have enough white creatures to cast it with convoke here. Although I guess... They could have, if they just didn't play an extra creature, they could have gone Demolition and Convoke for four. So they are unlikely to have a Knight Errant in hand, which I guess makes it more likely that they have a Recruiter pumping the team here. So that's going to be a lot of damage that we cannot block. Three mana. And is it time for Recruiter? Nope, Bunnycorn. That's also quite large. And another Frontliner. And alright, opponent did have a Knight Errant after all. Maybe they top decked it, maybe they were waiting for the full Convoke. So it doesn't get much better finding another Knight Errant as well. Doesn't get much better for the Red White Tokens deck on the play. So I'm not loving my chances. Could hang on to Crucible to make two 1 1 blockers at some point. For now, probably have to Draconic Destiny into Itali's favor, taking one damage to cast it. And then hope to hit something nice. What do we get? Research isn't bad. So now I can go for Vigilance. So we keep it back on defense. I think that's the play over anything else. So we get to hit for six. A draw card. And then, yeah, we're still taking quite the hit. Maybe not quite lethal, but close. Question is, can we deal 12 damage next turn? I can pump for 4, that's 10 damage. So, that's not enough. So we'll need to cast a few more auras. Opponent convokes once again. They could still hit a recruiter and cast it, which probably kills us or forces us to chump bunny corn, which is pretty much the same. And now I guess veteran gaining them one life, but they also took one from the battlefield forge. They seem to have options. Epicure and reinforcements represents a bunch more life gain as well. And uh, yeah, they can make the bunny corn quite large. They can pump Knight Errant with a frontliner to get it up to a 5 5, so it can essentially trade for Light Paws. So yeah, I think we're dead here. Yeah, that's the Red White Tokens deck doing what it's capable of. And uh, we're forced to chump Bunny Corn, which doesn't leave us in a winning position. Let's put it that way. Now actually, if our opponent was at a lower life total, we could still do something cool with Emperor, play research on it, and then Hammer Hand to give it haste. So if the opponent was low enough, that was potentially a way to go, but that's not the case here. So, can play Light Paws, Bypass, get a Hammer Hand attack, and then die on the way back. Creature is unblockable, get to connive, 
and uh, sadly won't get to cast those. Alright, GG's. Play and draw definitely making a pretty big difference in a matchup like this where there's not a whole lot of interaction, it's just whoever gets to enact their game plan the fastest wins, and I think red-white tokens probably has the edge there. Especially without there being some sort of live gain enchantments to swing the race back in our favor. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand has potential. Sundown Pass make things a little awkward. Now with the untapped land we're good to go. So Skrelv into perhaps turn 2 Light Pass, turn 3 Itali's Favor. Facing some sort of Bant deck. Well, they could have a counter spell up here, potentially a reason to bait with Virtuoso. Instead of going for Light Pass right away. Don't have a 1 mana aura to play it and then still have Cryptomancer up. So I think I'm still going for Light Pause here with the turn 1 Skrelv. And if they counter here, we'll reconsider. They want to attack into potential 2 2 token. And we, of course, want to keep up the protection for Light Pause. Could see end of turn removal on tap, remove light paws, and yeah, there's the march. So that's probably what's happening here. Opponent let us on tap, so now we have Cryptomancer available. And since we drew Skrelv, I think the play is play Skrelv, pass with Cryptomancer up. And then not play or Aura into another potential answer here. My only concern now is giving the opponent enough time to deploy a Sweeper. But we'll uh, see what happens. Now I can potentially attack into a token from Virtue of Loyalty. Yep. Make them block first. But now we are shields down on protecting light paws. It's gonna be an emperor to exile it. Okay, so it looks like we'll have to favor on Cryptomancer or wait to enchant Virtuoso, which is also an option. And then for now, Skrelf can attack Emperor. Yeah, it's a bit of an awkward sequencing, but I don't think. Putting the Itali's favor on Cryptomancer is gonna hurt enough. Could also go with Draconic Destiny, I suppose. And then uh, next turn, we can Itali's favor. But if they do have some sweepers, I think I would rather have Destiny as a leftover. But then we're also committing Virtuoso into a board wipe, so damned if you do, damned if you don't. The opponent's deck might be more of a creature deck instead of a pure control deck. But uh, many colors make me a little suspicious. Yeah, let's just go for Virtuoso. And then Skrelv is gonna attack Emperor so we don't have to worry about it. And then if they take out Virtuoso with spot removal, we can move all in on the Cryptomancer. If they have a sweeper, we're gonna be sad. It's gonna be binding. All right, now with the research, this might work out a bit better. If we hit a light pause, that would be sweet. Another Cryptomancer. Well, we don't have to worry about spot removal here. So a Skrelv is free to attack. And Nissa could destroy enchantments, technically. It's gonna make a large token, which... Yeah, we can now fly over, thanks to the Draconic Destiny, to finish off Nissa. Does mean giving up on the extra card draw. But it's probably worthwhile. 
could also split up the destiny, put it on the small cryptomancer, pump it for one, activate Skrelv on green to take out Nissa. Don't really see the advantage. I'll just pump here. Take out Nissa. And then next turn we can start going face and drawing multiple cards. Up the Beanstalk, that's fine. Plays well with Leyline Binding. And they're gonna exile Skrelv. Gains us a bit of life back. So yeah, having a Hexproof creature seems good in this matchup. Opponent's got a lot of spot removal. And hopefully we're spared a sweeper effect. They might be looking at which enchantment to exile with the Binding. I'm just gonna put a few more on here. Might be better off pumping with the uh, Draconic Destiny now, since we already have Evasion. So there's the Binding. Draws with Beanstalk. And we can still pump with the Destiny if we'd like. Opponent actually seems to be going for research. Can pump all the way. So our opponent falls to eight, we get to draw. Hammer hand could also come in handy. Their opponent is still facing lethal from Cryptomancer getting pumped next turn. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our enchantment deck in action. And yeah, Light Paws still not quite as good as it can be in other formats where you've got more powerful auras at your disposal. But uh, still pretty impressive what it's capable of with Itali's favor especially. Finding multiple auras at once can lead to some pretty crazy turns. So yeah, pretty fun deck in standard. Not going to be incredibly competitive since it's not the fastest deck at uh, presenting a lot of damage and uh, it also doesn't really interact with the opponent's game plan. So if you're not the fastest deck and you're also vulnerable to specific interaction, that's not going to leave you in the best position, especially on the ranked ladder. So I wouldn't recommend it as a competitive deck, but if you want to just play some auras, this is still pretty fun. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.